the journey toward humility. Within the living journey, one will in time come to realize the origin of the state of internal being from the essence of the divine, is humility. The state of existence of the active environment holds the effects in which contaminates the mind towards the darker place. To resist what is before you within the environment as a presence of temptation or destruction, implies a part of the inner self in which has already submitted to it in its implication against your mind and spirit, even by way of fear, lust or mere gift of curiosity. Resistance reveals, the duality of you inwardly and what is trying to destroy you. You are made strong enough, to not have to resist anything. To release the potential and destructive effects conformed inside of you of the world, is key from conflicting forces. The destructive surge of lust inside conformed to, is in harmony with the enemy's destructive intention against you. This, released in humility, will immediately place you back into just existing in the greatest state of consciousness of where there is no conflict nor duality. To just, be, will be revealed as your most powerful and original state of existence. It needs nothing, it's sacred in terms of knowledge and yet still reveals to you that you have all that is needed to live in freedom. Human, humanity, humane, humble, humility, humanitarian is the purpose of venturing through the storms of times. The fire of times. All of which has created a necessity of coming to know yourself that the journey will in time become, more pleasant through the clarity implanted within. Learn of what it truly means to be a human being from within the soul. And once this is realized, then you will stay there and not embrace any doctrine or religion. You will remain what and who you are as growth continues there. You need not to add nor take from what the Creator has made of you. What's is needed is already present and always has been. A time dawns of when you realize that you have been maneuvered into a stream of complications, in spite of your good intentions, by liars of good intentions. You find yourself the one being crashed into the stones in the stream in your will to continue to move forwards with good intentions. But, the time comes of when you understand that the stream is not so pleasant of a flow, and you will have to think of stepping out of the stream if you are to survive with peace of mind and spirit. The confusion that seems to never end in human relationships upon many states. The disappointments, the conflicting lifestyles that produce in the union a struggle of life principles that are productive and destructive, and still you remain within the stream of challenge, waiting within your power to endure for things to change, but they don't to our satisfaction sometimes because the lesson has not yet been fully understood. After a long and bumpy ride of the rivers of challenge that flows only, crashing, into more stones of opposition, you understand that there is truly no flow, unless the stream is made placid with one infinite reality, and that is the love of oneself. The love of oneself is that one major acting principle, in which we sometimes forget, lies still very much living inside of us since the beginning. We lose our sense of self-love and compassion in trying our most to love someone else so much, that we forget to leave enough love for our own common wisdom and intelligence to function and thus, we become numb to the crashes that we impact of the stones and so we settle for less than we deserve. And we then become one with the destructive flow of this lifeless stream of pointless activity in which leads our lives to a stone wall of failure and a disgraceful immortality. Choose to step out of the stream of non-productivity, leave those behind who wish to remain in it, and start to truly live your life in the way that all life is meant to live, and that is as the river flows in peace and humility, as you know you deserve. You are a living human being that is constantly growing and learning of your very being. It is the purpose of living. Only that which has been touched by death, can no longer grow with movement. As long as you are alive, you are growing and in the movement of evolutionary change, enlightenment. The beauty of living and therefore growth is that, as long as you are living and growing, even within the present state of knowing that you are evolving without limitations and no thoughts of when the growth will end, within that movement of continuous evolution, its movement implies, you will always be greater than you are currently. Yes. Time is movement of existence. Evolution is growth and into expansion as the spreading of the arms symbolizing the heart and the mind. 
Each moment is imbued with the gift of life which confirms the movement. Each second that is felt and understood as the presence of enlightenment, gives greater purpose to the next second, and in loving this encourages further cooperation with the death of what is destructive, for to embrace what is productive. And that is the betterment of the human being. Loving yourself to the very being will always produce sound and direct decisions and therefore, actions. When the mind has been made up, irrational emotions and their implications of destruction, are absent. A sound mind is still and yet vibrating with a calm and clear energy. Its clarity. Its freedom. In the event of growth, there is a time of when one is suffering the course of evolutionary change from what is, from what was and to what is to become according to and designated time of God. As the flower, we evolve from suffering through the soil of struggle and into the beauty of the present. Continue to understand within that present time, that you are only suffering these things for to be revealed a beauty that has been inside of you from the beginning of the moment the Creator spoke life consciousness of your very being in the Eternal. Embracing the trails that gives us our identity, is no distinction of embracing our true vitality. In spite of the trials that affects us inside, the pains and the anguishes that we feel, I know that what truly keeps us sound, what keeps us trying and what keeps us moving forwards is a great force in which has been the source of all creation, and that is, love. There are truly times in the living experience in which seems to be absence of beauty, peace and clarity and we ask of why these things transpire against us and our well-being. We come to understand as love continues to produce the energy to move forwards, even when we assert to be too tired because we have become mentality and emotionally frustrated or fatigued, that all of what has happened, has been destined to happen to reveal the greatness of ourselves, to ourselves. We, too occupied in our pain and confusion, sometimes miss the point in these times, because of being too affected of the effects of the trial. But we, after humility sets its place inside in time receives the clarity of why this happened and the vitality of its purpose to show us of how very great and powerful we have been created for a purpose, greater than ourselves. What has brought us to this point, is a love that was imbued within us, that guides us and that heals us to know that it is always a good thing to continue to love in spite of the past, in spite of the hurt feelings and in spite of what will come forth. It's the freedom that every human being is deserving of. In this truth living inside of us, will always be the great force that will continue to move each and every one of us towards a purpose given that will help us all as a whole. Regardless of our differences, we all share that one miraculous and profound gift and that is love and a life that is truly one with that same presence that gives us all our purpose of living. Don't lose what gives this life its worth existing in that reveals your true greatness, and continue to be that great force of a living human being, filled with love. Love and generosity has in fact been abused and taken advantage of in many instances, but it will never be destroyed inside of you and I, love is the very energy in which produces every heartbeat and the energy to forgive and to move forwards with all the vitality of the human being intact. There is a reality within a appointed time of when the storm continues to emerge its intense force. It continues to rage around us in dedication and profound diligence. We notice that it in time gets stronger and stronger as we are still waiting for it to pass. But not every storm in our lives are left up to the storm itself to pass. There are times of when the storm itself is destined by the Creator to remain for us to be made aware of a great and powerful gift that has been imbued inside of our very being since before the beginning of our physical existence for to resolve and rectify our lives into order. It is a gift in which extends our known abilities and sense of morality and not is made revealed even unto ourselves at that present time. It is at the time we receive clarity that this storm is not destined to pass upon its own as we understand it in separating ourselves from it. And then once we understand that the storm is not destined to pass upon its own, we suddenly understand that it is, we, who are responsible for the storm to end. There comes a time in all of our lives of when we come to know that this storm is only getting its power due to our lack of action and pure sense of love and responsibility. At the very moment of clarity, 
Suddenly there is an action based upon an urgency that we are risen to our highest state of truth to end the conflict. We understand that the storm is only a reflection of what is going on inside of us. We understand that it must come to an end, and we suddenly know that only we can end the same storm that we created, with simplicity and its powerful state of divine authority that brings a calmness. Mark 4 verse 39 And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Mark 4 verses 38 to 40 Yes. We truly have this power also when we say, Okay that is enough. Written by David Anthony Brayboy